important thing I forgot to talk to you about. Of course, I remember that when you walked out. Oh, I know, and I was reading them on my phone, which is fine. Everybody want water? Yes. Would you like some water? I usually do that. I leave my diet. Yes, it's not working stuff. right now. <laughs> I did. It's not working. <laughs> it's not working. I know. Missing. I did until last week. Hello, Mr. Mayor. How are you doing? Hey, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're talking. It's not the rain out there. It's nasty. We had hail here earlier this afternoon. Really? About 3, 3.30. Twenty minutes really fast. Listen, if it'll kill some of the canker worms in my house, I'm, I'd be, be happy. Canker worms. <laughs> I forget. Um, Uh, good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. on Monday, the 20th. I certainly want to welcome all of you that are with us this evening. Uh, if we could just take a moment for a solid meditation, please. Thank you. I'm going to ask <coughs> Councilman Davis if he would lead us in the pledge. Councilman Brown is, has an excused absence. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? <laughs> Mayor Bell. Not present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Councilmember Katati. Here. Councilmember Davis. Here. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. And Councilmember Shule. Here. And Councilmember Brown has an excused absence. Okay. We have uh, one ceremony item. Is that up front? Yes. Thank you. Uh, it's Lieutenant Brown, Assistant Commander of the Community Services Bureau of Presence. Thank you. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, this proclamation speaks to Crime Victims' Rights Week. Uh, whereas Americans are the victims of more than 26 million crimes each year, <coughs> and crime can touch the lives of anyone, regardless of age, national origin, race, creed, religion, gender, sexual orientation, immigration, or, ec or economic status. Whereas many victims face challenges in finding appropriate services, including victims with disabilities, young victims of color, deaf and hard of hearing victims, LGBTQ victims, tribal victims, elder victims, victims with mental illness, immigrant victims, teen victims, victims with limited English proficiency, and others. Whereas the entire community has a role to play in the national theme for 2015, Engaging communities and empowering victims provides an opportunity to recommit ourselves to extending our reach through a victim-centered approach. Whereas involving survivors helps victims, service providers, and criminal justice professionals understand the cultural values and expectations of under and underserved victims who seek assistance and justice. Whereas engaging victims, communities, and learning from leaders about their unique needs helps service providers foster a supportive and culturally re relevant atmosphere in which victims seek help and healing, whereas incorporating communities, extending experts and trusted sources of support into efforts to fully serve survivors with developing criminal justice system in response that is truly accessible and appropriate for all victims of crime. Whereas over the past 18 years, the Durham Police Department has made significant strides in providing comprehensive services to crime victims. The or origins of a victim services unit in 1997 
was a milestone in positioning the agency to better implement and advocate for services that reinforce victims' rights, whereas with the full weight of their community and victim service providers behind them, survivors will feel endorsed to face their grief, loss, fear, anger, and shame without fear of judgment, and will feel understand and worthy of support. Whereas National Crime Victims' Rights Week, which is April 19th through the 25th, 2015, is an opportune time to commit to ensuring that all victims of crime, even those who are challenging to reach or serve, are offered culturally and linguistically accessible and appropriate services in the aftermath of crime, where the City of Durham is hereby dedicated to building partnerships with trusted sources of support, including community leaders, religious groups, schools, and other agencies to better reach and serve all victims of crime, no matter their community. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the week of April 19th through April 25th, 2015, as Crime Victims' Right Week, and reaffirm the City of Durham's commitment to creating a victim service and criminal justice response that assists all victims of crime during Crime Victims' Rights Week and throughout the year and to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation for those community members, victim service providers, and criminal justice professionals who committed to improving our response to all victims of crime so that they may find relevant assistance, support, justice, and peace. And witness my hand, Corporate Seal City of Durham, North Carolina. This is the 20th day of April, 2015. I'm going to present this to Lieutenant Brown for any comments that you may have. Thank you. Hello. Um, First, I'd like to thank Councilman Eddie Davis for your inspiring words in attending the banquet yesterday. And I also would like to introduce my staff, those who are here, which is, uh, please stand up often. This is Sergeant Offen. He's the sergeant over the unit. And I'd also like to recognize my Deputy Chief, Deputy Chief Marsh. Um, there are several things that we're doing this week for um, Victims' Rights Week, and I just want to give a, a couple of things that we've done or that we've planned for. On Wednesday, we're actually kicking off the Start by Believing. Um, it's going to be a forum that we're doing with NCCU um, on Central's campus, and we're actually doing that or heading that up with a lot of the young student athletes there on campus, and that will actually be Wednesday. Um, sometime in the afternoon. On Thursday, we're also doing the Start by Believing um, campaign, which we're kicking off with the Religious Leaders Coalition group at the Shepherd House. And those are just to name a few of the things that we're doing. But thank you for this proclamation, and have a great evening. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments by members of the council? If not, uh, we'll look for priority items by the city manager first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I don't have any priority items this evening, but I would uh, like to take uh, just a brief moment uh, for recognition, if I could. As uh, everyone at the day certainly knows, and many people in the audience, um, our general services director, Joel Reitzer, will be retiring at the end of this month and as such this is Joel's last council meeting with us and uh, I wanted to take just a moment to uh, wish him well and uh, tell him how much we appreciate the work he's done. Joel has uh, has guided uh, any number of just hugely significant projects uh, over the relatively short time he was here, five, it's almost six years, uh, including the uh, Durham Convention Center renovation, the Carolina Theater renovation, Durham Bulls Athletic Park renovation, and really many, many others. But uh, just wanted to say, Joel, thank you. We wish you well, and we appreciate all that uh, you have uh, provided guidance and support to, uh, to improve Durham and make this a better community. So thank you. Thank you so much. If I might just say a word, I didn't expect this, but um, <clears throat> I'd really like to say how much I enjoyed. Uh, six years is, is, was a long time, Tom. <laughs> that, that was a lot, but, uh, but no, sincerely, I really enjoyed it. This kind of uh, sneaked up on me. Um, I thought this would take a little bit longer, but really our plans fell into place um, pretty quickly over the last year or so, and so it's with uh, great thanks to all of you for the opportunity to work here in a, such an important capacity with all of you and with the 
very competent city staff and general services staff that I had to work with. So I think we got a few things done, and I really enjoyed it. So thank you very much, and I hope to be in touch with you all in the future. Thank you. I recognize the city attorney for any comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. Uh, likewise, the city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we'll <coughs> proceed with the agenda, and uh, as usual, the consent agenda is first of any uh, council member or someone from the public pools a consent agenda item. We will discuss that uh, towards the end of the meeting. And I'll read the heading. Item one is approval of city council minutes. <coughs> item two is housing appeals board appointment. Item three is the Durham City County Environmental Affairs Board appointments. Item four is the mayor's nominee for appointment to the passenger vehicle for hire commission which is created due to a vacancy. Item six is renewal of the Durham City County Interlocal Cooperation Agreement for planning. Item seven is the administrative interpretation of Noose Jordan Lake protected area. Item eight is interlocal agreement reauthorized in the Durham Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. Item nine is the Austin Avenue Bridge Replacement Municipal Agreement. <coughs> Item 10 is the second amendment to the Hillendale Golf Course Management Agreement between the City of Durham and Amerizel Golf LLC. Item 11 is Twin Lakes Park Site Improvements Contract with DW Ward Construction Company, Inc. Item 12 is change order to address modifications to the masonry scope of work for 400 Cleveland Street roof and envelope and renovations contract with LA Downing and Son, Inc. Item 13 is utility extension agreement, water only, with Christine G. Jones, individual to serve 7817 Farrington Mill Road. Items 14, 16, and 25 through 29 are items that can be found on the general business agenda as public <coughs> hearing. Entertain a motion for the approval of consent agenda items. Second. Been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. We move to the general business agenda, public hearings. Item 14 is a zoning map change for Southside East Phase 2 and 3, Z14000034. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, Pat Young with the Planning Department. <clears throat> before I uh, introduce the case, I confer certify for the record that all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with the provisions of law and their affidavits to that effect on file <clears throat> with the Planning Department. Excuse me. Uh, the case, as the mayor said, is E14-00034, Southside East, Phases 2 and 3. It's a request to change the zoning map uh, designation of 10.7 acres located at 2 Point Sienna Drive from its current uh, zoning map designation of Planned Development Residential, or PDR, 5.120, to the requested designation of Residential Urban Multifamily, also known as RUM, uh, with a development plan which would allow for the development of up to 150 residential units. <clears throat> uh, this application also includes a request for parking reduction. Uh, this request uh, proposes to provide 1.2 parking spaces per unit uh, rather than the standard requirement of two spaces per unit, and that would be approved if this item is approved. Uh, the parking reduction request has been reviewed by uh, city staff, which has found the applicant has provided sufficient information to support their request, and uh, this information is included in your staff report for this item in detail. Uh, the development plan does uh, include uh, commitments greater than the ordinance standards, uh, which includes a provision of a bus stop or shelter along with uh, several other text and graphic commitments identified in detail in your staff report. Um, the staff determines this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other adopted plans and policies, and the Planning Commission recommended approval of this item at its March 10th meeting by a vote of 12 to 0. I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. You've heard the staff report. I would ask other comments first by members of the council questions. I don't have anyone that's signed up to speak for this item. I recognize Councilwoman Katani. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble with my agenda, but um, I appreciate the additional um, responses to some of the questions we raised at work session. I wasn't completely clear on question or comment, the response to question or comment two regarding bike pedestrian committee comments. So I understand um, that <coughs> 
City Department of Transportation are in the early design stage of a plan that would include modification of wheelchair ramps, handicapped accessibility and installation of pedestrian push buttons, et cetera, et cetera, on Roxborough Street and Lakewood Mangum. Who is paying for those improvements? I mean, I saw that there was a plan, but it just says upon approval in the FY15-16 budget, so that was not clear to me. Oh, well, I'm at the microphone. Reginald Johnson, Department of Community Development. I think when it comes to money, I think I might need to defer to transportation on this particular. Okay. And yes. Uh, Bill Judge with Transportation. Our department has requested it as part of the uh, fiscal year 2016 uh, capital improvement project, and it is in the, the funded capital improvement project portion of the budget. Okay. And thank you. Does the same apply to the pedestrian signals on the corners of the intersection of Roxboro Street Lakewood and Mangum Roxboro connector? Yes, it would all, both of those items one and two would all be in that, that request. Right. Bill, are any of those uh, jointly funded with the state or are those all 100% city, do you recall? Um, they would be primarily 100% city. There may be some reimbursement for some of the signal work with the state, but right. okay. primary. Thank you. Thank you. You for me. Yeah. Recognize Councilman Moffitt. Um, this is a question for uh, Mr. Young. Um, <clears throat> in the memo that that uh, Council Member Katati was referencing, the third one had to do with a bike maintenance repair station, mm -hmm. and the response was, "Have you seen this memo, Mr. Young?" I, I have, Councilman Moffitt. Okay, so it says that MBS will commit to the installation of the bike maintenance repair station but believes it'll be better discussed during review and site plan approval process. Uh, but they could offer a commitment to in install such a station without having to commit to the location of it. Is that correct? That is correct. We, um, based on consultation with our colleagues in transportation, we'd ask that they consider if, a, if such a commitment is made, that it be clearly identified <coughs> that this be done on their site, not in a specific location on their site, but not in the public right of way. So there wouldn't be implied maintenance responsibility by the public. Right, okay. Is, is the applicant present? Could, hey, how are you doing? So the, the question I have then is, would you go ahead, and, or, or, since you said it, MBS will commit to installation of bike maintenance and repair station, then is that, are you proffering that commitment tonight? Yes, we are. Okay, and then so you'll work it out with staff. Work out the location at a later date. Right, okay. And, but you'll work out the wording with staff in keeping with Mr. Young's request to be located on the property that's being rezoned rather than the public right of way? Uh, yes, we will, although there might be a better location on <clears throat> the site we've just developed given some locational issues. But again, I would be totally at the planning department's jurisdiction, you know, and discretion mr. young would it would it meet your concerns if it were on either the phase one or phase two I believe that that would certainly be acceptable just the applicant clearly stipulates that which I believe he just did on right the record. thank you thank you so much You're welcome. let me ask are there other questions anyone else in the public that would like to speak that did not sign up to speak on this item I'm sorry council no Mark no it's quite all right Thanks. I just want to take a moment and and thank mr. Johnson for the memo and the thorough response to the concerns that were raised given it's expedited and we didn't have time to send it back it was extremely helpful thank you are there other comments questions from the public uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public uh, desire to speak on this item I will declare the public hearing to be closed and matters back before the council second it's been properly moved and second all in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed the motion passes Unanimously, and we move to item 15, street closing. Consistency Mr. statement. Mayor, um, to move, uh, you the, I move the consistency uh, statement on number 14. All right. You guys are good. Great. Uh, all in favor of the motion, and keep saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Move to item 15, street closing, Shadron Street, street closing 14 Matterhorn Road, street closing 14 Congress Place Street closing 140014, uh, Kennington Drive Street closing 140015, and Chanticleer Drive S Street closing 140016. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Pat Young again with the Planning Department, members of Council. Uh, this item, as the Mayor just outlined, is um, a request by Hendrick Automotive Group to close uh, approximately 5,800 linear feet of five different public streets, which the Mayor uh, just outlined and that are detailed in Attachment 4 of your staff report. Uh, this is within the former Kennington Heights subdivision, which is now located on a property under the control of Hendrick Automotive Group. And uh, if this request is approved, these right-of-ways would be uh, recombined with the adjacent properties and incorporated into proposed auto sales uh, and associated uses approved under recent actions by council uh, associated with zoning and annexation of, the, of this property. Uh, thank you, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, you've heard the staff report. The public hearing is open. Again, I would ask first are there questions, comments by members of the council? Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on the site and decide to meet on public hearing? Let the record reflect no one in the audience has to speak on this item. I will declare the public hearing to be closed, matter of fact, for the council. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam, I'm sorry. All in favor of the motion, thank you for saying aye. 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 So those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. I move to item 16, <coughs> which is a public hearing on the approval of the draft 2015-2020 consolidated plan 2015-2016 annual action plan and 2015-2020 analysis of impediments. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, members of City Council, this public hearing is a required public hearing uh, by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Wilma Conyers, uh, Federal Programs Coordinator for the particulars. Good evening, Mayor Bell and members of Council, Wilma Conyers, Department of Community Development. The purpose of this public hearing is to receive citizen comments on the draft 2015-2020 consolidated plan and the 2015-2016 annual action plan and the 2015-2020 analysis of impediments. The consolidated plan slash annual action plan specifies how the city will address the housing and community, community development needs for the next five years through the use of community development block grant funds, home funds, ESG and recently added housing opportunities for people with public aid with AIDS. For FY1516, the city expects to receive $1,807,500 in community development block grant funds, $776,323 in home funds, consortium funds, $100 $160,046 in ESG funds and $282,206 in, $282, in HOPLA funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The draft consolidated plan and annual action plan and analysis of impediments were made available for public review beginning March 19, 2015 through April 20, 2015. Mm -hmm. The plans and the AI were developed with the assistance of Urban Design Ventures of Homestead, Pennsylvania. Notice of this meeting was advertised in the Herald Sun, the Carolina Times, KPASA newspapers, and also via a general listserv. As a recipient of CDBG, home, ESG, and Hotwell funds, the city is required to hold at least two public hearings. The first public hearing was held on October 6, 2014. This the consolidated plan must be electronically submitted to the Department of Housing and Urban Development by May 15th. A summary of comments from this public hearing will be included in the consolidated plan. Thank you. You've heard the uh, staff report on what's been requested this evening. Uh, I'm going to ask so that we do have one person that is signed to speak on this item. Uh, is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? This is a public hearing. If you haven't signed up, if you could just come forth in the back, if you don't mind. Is there anyone else that wants to speak? Well, in that case, uh, I reckon, let me ask, are there any comments by the staff, I mean, council before we hear the public comments? I have questions, but I can wait. Okay. Uh, in that case, Ms. Edith Thompson and the young lady who, if you can come forth also. Uh, you have three minutes initially on this. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, to the Honorable Mayor and distinguished members of the City Council, my name is Edith Thompson, and I'm the Executive Director of Rebuild Durham. 
Thank you for this opportunity to address you concerning item 16, the City of Durham's analysis of impediments and consolidated plan. First, I'd like to commend the staff for their efforts in this difficult and tedious job of identifying the impediments to fair housing in the city and county of Durham. I have closely read the documents and conclusions and agree with the overarching message that is the need for affordable housing both in and outside of the city limits. As a 25-year veteran of civil rights advocacy focusing on housing and the former housing <coughs> chair of the National NAACP's Board of Directors, I'm very familiar with the process we're undertaking and the anticipated outcomes. Rebuild Durham has stood steadfast in its mission to provide affordable housing options to elderly residents, disabled individuals, returning veterans. Our goals are strategically aligned with the AI and the city's consolidated plan. Therefore, I stand this evening to pledge our support <coughs> towards assisting the city in reaching the goals of increasing access to affordable housing in and outside of the city educating the community on the protections and rights associated where, with fair housing and fair lending, working with the city to lessen the unintended impacts associated with efforts to eliminate concentrations and areas of poverty and lack of opportunity. And finally, Rebuild Durham joins the city in its obligation to affirmatively further fair housing by dedicating our time and resources to assist in the mission of fair housing education, equal opportunity, and neighborhood stabilization. We respectfully submit the Board of Directors Rebuild Durham. I thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Thompson, you can leave your remarks with the clerk if you like. Yes. So you can be a part of that. I'd like to recognize Ms. Uh, Rebecca Harvard Barnes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Thank you. Council members. My name is Rebecca Harvard Barnes. I work with Habitat for Humanity of Durham. And I um, come not as well prepared as my <laughs> colleague. I thank her <laughs> for her words of wisdom. But I'm here to um, say that Habitat is, is proud to be an affordable housing agency in Durham and that Habitat works because of our partnerships with all people and our partnerships with the city. Um, you all have been a very important partner to Habitat for 30 years. Um, since you, Mayor Bell, declared the fight against poverty last February, Habitat has sold 11 homes uh, within three blocks of Joe's Diner, which is um, at the corridor of Driver Street and Anger Avenue, as you all know. Ten more homes are now being built by Habitat in that area, but Habitat would like to do more. The city's small projects and neighborhood revitalization fund will allow Habitat for Humanity of Durham to do more and to serve more families in Northeast Central Durham. That's really all I have to say. I want to thank you all. If you have any questions. I have one question. I, yes, sir. We do appreciate the, the work that you're doing, particularly over in that area. Uh, you don't have to tell us now. Could you get back and tell us how many residents of Northeast Central Durham are occupying the houses that you I, I we can okay. absolutely and I actually have some information I can tell you right this minute Fine. about how the first two houses Habitat ever built in Durham were on um, Anger Avenue um, and that currently in these last 10 homes that were built in that corridor the three miles within Joe's Diner um, Three uh, ho current residents of Habitat Homes were uh, residents in Northeast Central Durham. So, and I can get you more information because there are more. Well, that, that would be helpful. Uh, as you probably know, one of the concerns that some residents had raised is that uh, they like the work that you guys are doing, but they also like to hear that more of the residents that are in the neighborhood are able to take advantage of the homes you're building. So. And, and we appreciate and respect that and we're working with those folks and we're working with the residents our family services department and our um, community development department are working really hard to try to make that happen all right thank you your support would help us make that happen mm -hmm. thank I you uh, are the other persons that want to speak on this item again this is a public hearing item if not I'd like to recognize Councilwoman Katati and Councilman Shul. Great. 
So um, I just on the fourth page or the last page of attachment nine funding recommendation, I w was hoping for some clarification on items 19, 20, and 21. Um, Could you say that again? Which document? Uh, attach. Oh, sorry. It's attach. It's number nine, attachment eight, F funding recommendations. It's the very last attachment in the fourth page on that. <coughs> Is there a staff person? Uh, that's Reginald. Respond? Okay. So, um, Reginald, I can see in essentially the fourth column what was requested, and then in the fifth column what is being recommended, and then the notes in the last column. I, I just wanted to clarify what the recommended amount is funding, and I know you sent some additional responses in email, but I got it late and didn't have much time to look at it. So, for DCLT, there is no uh, no funding recommended for the that, two that, duplexes, that is, that is, is that correct. correct? That is correct. Okay. So for Habitat for Humanity, between 20 and 21, I see uh, fully funding of the acquisition and construction rehab, and that's for 11 lots in southwest central Durham, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. So then in 21, um, it's not quite half, a little more than half is being recommended mm -hmm. for second mortgage loans and acquisitions. So that 583,000 essentially, is that, how many second mortgage loans and lots is that actually covering? 20. Do, That's 20 second mortgages for 20 units. Okay. And acquisitions for 10 lots. Okay, so the notes does correspond to the recommended amount. Yes. Okay, so um, can you comment at all about the essentially why we want to give them half and what additional number of second mortgages and lots could be funded if we had additional funding? So I uh, don't know the, can't recall the, the, the okay. total in terms of the application, but what I will share with you the comments from the reviewers okay. of the application. So there were two issues. One was that uh, the amount, the proposal involved basically uh, land banking, mm -hmm. And one of the concerns that the, the, the reviewers had was that we're going to be moving land from one land bank to another land bank. And that really did not make a, a whole lot of sense, okay. uh, being that they already in the, the land is in the land bank. And then the other uh, issue was one of capacity. Because the question is, if they received all of that, could they move it? quite frankly, and uh, from what we uh, was shared in the uh, application based on what the reviewers said, uh, with all of what we're awarding them, there was a capacity challenge. Okay, I appreciate that. So the uh, 22nd mortgages, does that correspond to essentially these 21 lots or 20, lo 20 lots, or is it, are the mortgages actually going to other lots that have already been purchased and or under construction? Do you know what I mean? Yes. I'd they're not assigned. Do yeah. we have a sense of whether it's these same 20 or if it's others? Let me confer. Okay. I mean, I'm not objecting to it. I was just trying to get a better sense. Yeah. Uh, based upon uh, my understanding, they could be uh, referred to the same lot, but they're not identified. That's up to Habitat for Humanity. And there are some uh, lots that they are already working on that they could, this money could be applied to as well. Right. So I'll say I, I understand the capacity concerns, and I think for the number of lots under construction, that makes sense. If it's um, second mortgage loans, I don't want us to be behind the curve on that, if you know what I mean. I mean, when we know that they're that funding's essential to get people in homes as they're constructed, so if you can just keep us apprised on okay. that. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, keep you apprised on that. Okay. Thank you. But th this is consistent with the work that they've been doing. This is not a, we don't think it's an overly ambitious number or under uh, underestimated number. And in addition, there's funding in the current cycle that is also that is, contributing to those homes. That, that okay. is correct. Oh, that was it. Thank okay. you. Councilman Thank you. Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the Mayor Pro Tem. Um, first of all, Reginald, thank you for the answers to my questions that I sent. And uh, 
I didn't I didn't get them till late in the day and I was running so I haven't had a chance to really digest them that's not your fault I didn't give them to you to over the weekend and uh, but then again it was 400 pages to read and so I, that's my <laughs> excuse um, and, and I have had a chance to read through some of your responses but not all thoroughly so let me just if you don't mind let me ask a few of the questions and then okay. again if, if that's okay um, just if you could describe I, I just wasn't really familiar at all with the runaway and homeless youth situation and this is my third question uh, about on page 12 in the last paragraph is a reference to the runaway and homeless youth uh, mm -hmm. program grant uh, and but apparently there's no program and I, I asked what the situation with this was and I haven't really had a chance to digest your answer so would you mind just kind of going over that yes. a little bit so in 2010 there uh, was a federal runaway and homeless uh, youth funding that was awarded to an organization uh, that organization uh, was not able to obtain the proper licenses required to operate the facility so the program never became operational and the uh, the organization had to uh, the turn to basically not they could not use the money and so the money was not was turned back in is that uh, is that money available to us in the future or was that a you know I mean is it it seems like that would be great if we could have a mo have that money and have it work with an organization that was able to carry it out and I was wondering if there a future availability of those those funds so I would have to check to see if there's uh, those funds are continuing not the specific <coughs> funds but the program yeah. I'm pretty sure that the money looking at the years the money is not uh, available right. now right okay but you're saying that there, that program may still be around and there may be some potential funding. I wouldn't know. I would have to check, to be okay. honest with you. Um, the, um, I was just, the, the chart on page 85, I just wanted to comment because you explained it. Uh, the, the figures for the number of workers and the number of jobs, the, there was such a disparate, there was such a great distance between those. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you all identified in your answer that this measure is calculated by the census, compares the number of jobs and number of workers are associated to a particular business sector. It, it's just, it's such a great discrepancy. Um, it, 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 uh, I, so I had, uh, I guess I have to confess to some confusion still, even after reading your answer about it, you know, and, and I was wondering if you had any other comments on that or. Okay. What I will do is turn it over to our consultant page 85 there's a chart of the figures of the number of workers and the number of jobs councilman uh, Walt Hagelin from urban design ventures yes there is more jobs and there are workers in the city that's uh, due to the fact that you have some very large employers the the hospitals the universities etc they're located in Durham and there's a lot of uh, people coming from outside uh, the county and the city that are working in Durham. So that is the, the difference in the jobs. And, and we're and, in inward migration. Say again? We're, we're in migration for jobs. Yeah. I, I just, I, okay, I, I'm going to just say that I'm skeptical of that distance between the number of jobs and the number of workers. I, I, I believe you that it's in the census report. I understand the explanation. I think, you know, I just would love our, our Office of Economic and Workforce Development to, to take a look at it, and, okay. and, 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 and I'd love to ask Kevin at some point. But anyway, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, in, the, um, in, in, a, in the discussion of the continuum of care, there's very little mention of the Durham Rescue Mission. Uh, this is an important Durham institution. Uh, serves a lot of people, but they, they're not, there's, there's very little about them in here and I was wondering if you could just give a little more about how the city relates to the rescue mission uh, in terms of the work described here I've had a chance to read through this once I'm sorry I haven't really had a chance to digest it yet so maybe uh, you could so give I'll, I'll be glad to uh, so the first thing I would share that the Durham rescue M mission is a part of the continuum of care the continuum of care is composed of all the organizations and uh, entities that work to end homelessness within Durham and the continuum of care has a lead agency, a lead uh, a policy making body called the Homeless Services Advisory Committee. And the staff to that body, the lead uh, agency or the collaborative applicant is the Community Development Department. So our charge in that structure is coming from HUD and our goal is to prepare a collaborative application 
made up of all of the work that goes on that we have <coughs> to submit to HUD that's evaluated with the other 500 COCs in the country. One of the things that we have to do is that we have to uh, report on all work regardless to where the funding source comes from or whether it's federal. So if someone, uh, such as the rescue mission, is using their own funds or private money but they're impacting homelessness, uh, we have to include them. But also, uh, they are supposed to register with the HMIS system, which is the data system. Yeah. But our Dead and Rescue Mission is elected not to do, not to do that. Mm -hmm. And from HUD on that piece, when we uh, are evaluated, that does not uh, bode well as for the community, for the collaborative application. Mm -hmm. And we, we've had to deal with that over the last few years, and it, it's, some, it's a mark against us when we submit. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you all have tried to get them to join the, the uh, HMIS data system. Yes, we have, and a member of the leadership of the Homeless Services Advisory Committee is talking and had been in dialogue with the Durham Rescue mm -hmm. Mission uh, on that point. And no luck. Not yet. Could, could I make a comment on that? Because I, I read your question and read your response. And I, I, don't, I can't say what's behind them not participating, but uh, since Reverend Mills has started the program, he's been pretty adamant about not wanting to receive local dollars, federal dollars, mm -hmm. to run his program. And I suspect that might be a part of that. Oh, you aren't, you aren't asking me any money, but his reluctance to receive federal dollars and local dollars for his program might also be part of his reluctance to give information to, to those agencies. But I don't know, but yeah. I suspect that's yeah. close to it. Okay. Uh, notwithstanding the fact he does a great job in, in, yes, in most the what he most does. Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, okay, thank you. And then. Um, on the question on, on uh, page 8 of the um, analysis of impediments, uh, I, my question was about the in-depth review of the mortgage lending practices, and, um, and I wondered if you could describe what you would like to have happen on this. This would be my last question, Reginald. Well, I'm going to uh, just say a little bit and then turn it over to our uh, consultant. but. It's suggested that the city engage in services of outside independent agency, consulting agency or private research firm to conduct an in-depth review of mortgage lending practices in the local banks and financial institutions. Um, to further this particular point, we need some more analysis and more data. Uh, and that's what this is positing, uh, that that's what we need, will need to move forward on, the, on this particular point. Uh, I have not, as the department, the department has not requested any funding at this time for a study of that nature. Yeah. And I'll let uh, our consultant uh, elaborate a little bit more on it. In reviewing the uh, data from the, the HMDA data, uh, which is the, uh, the Home uh, Mortgage Disclosure Act, every inst financial institution that provides more than five mortgages has to report this to the federal government. Uh, what we've found is that there appears to be, and I say appears to be, a discrepancy in the amount of, of loans that are generated and approved based on race. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way that you can really get involved in the data and to understand the data and to see if there's a pattern of discrimination is to actually do uh, interviews uh, of individuals who have applied, to do testing, et cetera. Uh, one of the things that uh, we suggested is that the department uh, contact the university uh, for the possibility of a graduate study. I know that the graduate students have participated with the department in the city in the past, uh, such as the, uh, the NRSA uh, project that they did for Southside, which was excellent, and, and to see if they could cooperate uh, you know, with the city and, and have this as a, as a project. Thank you. Okay. It does seem really important for us to figure out a way to do that if indeed there are these racial discrepancies in, as you all are, I guess you would say, suspect. Yes. You have found preliminary indications that our private lenders are, are uh, that there's a racial discrepancy. Yes, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it appears that, that there's a, a discrepancy and the only way that we will know is to have really in-depth analysis. Uh, this is not just uh, for the city of Durham, this is, is nationally, this same 
uh, situation has occurred. Right. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And 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 so I hope that I hope that we'll be able to try to figure out a way to to do that. And I know. I know you all will work on it. And, and Council Member Schubert, if I can interrupt, I, th I think maybe we'd have some conversation with the folks who are working in fair housing uh, and uh, human yeah. relations. Yeah. Uh, that might might be a better place for that sure. to happen than, um, yeah. than community development, mm -hmm. but we'll follow up on that. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any other questions, but I do just have a couple more comments. Uh, I was really glad in the report. First of all, it's a mammoth report. Way to go. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of information and a lot to absorb. Um, I was glad to see the rental rehabilitation was such a prominent part of the strategy going forward. Um, and I think that you all have done a great job this year bringing us the rental rehabilitation projects that we uh, that we did with Penny. And that the, the, the preserving affordability is a lot cheaper than building new. And you all did a great job this year with that. And I hope we'll continue to look for opportunities there. Uh, and so I was appreciative of that. Um, on page 99, uh, it's, it's cited that we need 72 more beds in Durham for permanent supportive housing for disabled homeless people. And you know, what strikes me about that, and, and I've seen that before, that number is, this seems like a realizable goal. I mean, there are a lot of these goals that seem very, very, very difficult and distance, distant. And I hope that our community as a whole will take note of this number. This seems like something we ought to be able to do. And uh, 72 more beds for, for homeless people with disabilities, um, is not an insurmountable number. I agree. And so I hope we can we can do that. Um, I was appreciative on page 100 that the report cited the hit that our homeless population is taking because of North Carolina's decisions not to expand um, Medicare. Um, as more and more states are doing this, uh, we're being left behind. Uh, North Carolinians, we're paying our tax dollars to Washington just like everybody else. Uh, expanding Medicare would be paid for by the return of these federal tax dollars and I was glad to see that this report paid attention to to that uh, decision by the General Assembly because I agree I agree with that very much. Um, <coughs> uh, this is just a typo. I, don't, I think on page 113, track 10.01 is mentioned in being in southeast central Durham, but I I know it's in northeast central Durham. I, I just believe that's a typo there. It's typo. Um, in the analysis of impediments. Uh, it was good to read on page 16 that the dissimilarity index is lower across the board in 2010 than it was in 2000, uh, indicating that, as a report says, that Durham is more integrated in terms of housing patterns than it was a decade ago. And uh, I was I was really I was really interested in to read that, and I didn't know that, and so it was interesting to read that uh, statistically, um, st shown statistically. Um, I do think, though, you know, it's daunting to read it. 26% of our households are living on less than $25,000 per year. Yes. Um, the median value of a home has gone from 126000 to 179000 in a decade. Median monthly rent has gone from 657 to 787 in a decade. 59% of our renters were, were a housing burden. Now, this is a large percentage. And, uh, and, and I worry, especially as, as the real estate values continue to escalate, that we are pricing people more and more out of the market. And uh, the market forces are large, and I appreciate the good job you all are doing to try to, um, to preserve as much affordability as we can. But the, the figures were, they weren't, they were, th there are some great things in this report in terms of the things we're doing, but there are also some things that are, are uh, yes. worrisome. Uh, just my final comment, I was interviewed by the consultants for this report as the liaison to the Housing Authority. They did a great job on the notes. I thought that they reported. I really appreciated reading the index of the conversation, the conversations in the appendix. Um, it, it mentions that I said that Housing Trust Fund is, is a, a policy. It's not a policy. It's, it's an idea. And uh, I hope we can do it. But I just wanted to set that record straight here in the minutes. I'm not asking for any change in the report. But I did want to mention that. Um, so. Anyway, basically, I thought the report covered a hum just a tremendous amount of ground in a way that was extremely informative, uh, a little too much reading, mm -hmm. but, um, but I appreciated uh, very much the work you all did, and uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I can I ask the mayor pro tem? Uh, um, is there a, I'm sorry, I have problems with this. 
is there um, some place in your office where you have housed all the applications for monies? Yes, and we do have a period uh, that we retain them. Uh, I have to look at Ms. Conyers for the, the period that we require to retain documents. <coughs> five years after the closeout. Five years. Five years after the closeout. Well, I'm not interested in going back that far. <laughs> I'm just interested in seeing if there were any persons who are new who are trying to access money. I know that we tend to give money to the same uh, groups, and so I'm just wondering where others are falling off because obviously uh, they are not meeting uh, some of the any of the requirements or are getting pretty low scores. So I just like to to find out who they are and where they need to uh, sort of shore up their applications. Okay. We have uh, had some uh, technical assistance workshops, and we will be having more on two sides, on the entitlement side and the COC. Uh, could you let me two. know so I could help yes. recruit people yes. to come to those? Um, yes. I, I know uh, someone who works with HUD even raised a question to me about uh, the same people getting, you know, the, and, and that's okay as long as others uh, understand what the politics are, what the process is, and know how to get into this network. Clearly there's a network in place and they haven't been able to, to break that. So I just want to see that yes. so I can perhaps have, see what we can do to help and, and, them And people well. have, and and other interests have come to our the trainings that we have had. One of the things I've encouraged for Interests to consider partnering with those who have to uh, engage with uh, that have been applied before, and that can be a possibility uh, as well. One of the things as a monitor, an entity that is being monitored, and also an entity, the community development that monitors others. We really need people who understand the processes uh, and the, the criteria that we are evaluated by because it is it is significant. Now, let me ask you this. Is it as difficult to get penny uh, for housing money as it is to get regular CDBG money? Are we using some, the same criteria that seems to be a barrier to uh, some folk who are trying to, to access? And, and, and you can come back with that. Okay. at a later date if you want to because I know time well, is fleeing and right. people want to go. Well, I, w I would just say that we spend some time in crafting our guidelines and the application process and so we do run them simultaneously for a time uh, when we open up in, in the fall but one of the things that's important in the criteria that we evaluate is, is outlined leveraging is important your capacity uh, all of those types of things are laid out in the criteria that we uh, uh, advertise. And I understand that. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, nonprofits that have been around forever are always going to have a jump on that. I'm just trying to figure out how we can help some yeah. other people. Well, that is something that, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, that we, uh, uh, is important to us. And that's the reason I mentioned to you and shared with you that we are interested in having technical assistance uh, workshops uh, on, both, on both the entitlement side as well as the CLC. Well, I would appreciate it. I'm sure some of the other nonprofits would. Yes, Thank you. Bye. Right, General, we, we constantly uh, each year hear about CDBG funding, whether it's going to be there or not going to be there. The 2.2 plus million we get this year, how does it compare with what we got last year? Were, were they, was it down or more or same or what? Ms. Conyers will respond specifically to that. Wilmer Conyers. Um, with respect to 2014-2015, the current fiscal year that we're in, we receive $1,795,508. So we had a slight increase um, from what we're expecting for 15-16 as it relates to CDBG dollars. For the home this year, we receive 800 
$31,909. So there will be a decrease in home funds for 15-16. With respect to ESG, we receive $147,357 for the current fiscal year. Our current allocation for 15-16 will be slightly more than that, which is about $160,000. And of course, this is 15-16 will be our first year for HOTWA funds. No, we get back to home again, say that again, the home funds? The home funds, there's going to be a decrease for 15-16. What was the amount for, for? For our current year, $831,909. So the, the agenda item says to adopt the home amount, $1,250,000. That includes program income. Um, approximately that home figure is going to be about $776. The additional monies are program income. Difference. Thank you. Yes, sir. And just, just for the public's sake, what determines whether we're up or down uh, in these funding? The Department of Housing and Urban Development. I understand and, that, but is, is it something we do more of or anything? Is that no, sir. It's based on a formula allocation, and then you have additional grantees that are being added to that formula allocation. So then there, for home, for instance, of course, we all know that the scrutiny that the home program is under. So if you add additional grantees nationwide, it is going to decrease the oh, amount okay. of funding along with the budget. additional okay. grantees. And, along, okay. and what is the driving force is the overall budget. So if there's less home dollars, there's less home dollars to be allocated toward all the grantees. But it sounds like we've been pretty fortunate in what we've been able to get considering the competitive nature of uh, this funding and source. Better than we had expected yeah. when we had these conversations about two or three years yeah. ago. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Let me ask recognize Councilwoman Katari. Well, it might be helpful to have that in a little table format because I know Councilman Brown will be missing this information. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, this is a public hearing. I would ask is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? Uh, if not, uh, let the record reflect no one else has to speak. I'll uh, declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council in I terms of requests. We accept the comments and move the item forward. All the motions. That and all the motions. Oh. Everything. Second. second. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. We move to item 25, which is a zoning map change, Sutton Station Z14000025. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Pat Young again with the planning department. Uh, the case before you, Sutton Station Z14000025, is a request to uh, change the zoning designation of 15.94 acres at 5800 Fayetteville Road from its existing zoning map designation of office institutional to uh, mixed use or MU with a development plan. Uh, as you're probably aware, this is an existing uh, office and retail development. Um, the request, if approved, would not allow for any increased building square footage, but would permit additional retail uses, as the current zoning designation does not allow for um, addition, restricts additional retail uses. Uh, the development plan associated with this request uh, is detailed in your staff report and does include commitments greater than ordinance standards, which includes a limitation on additional vehicle trips and the provision of a bus shop, stop or shelter at the location. Uh, staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan uh, and other adopted policies and ordinances uh, and the Planning Commission at their March 10th meeting recommended approval of a vote of 12 to 0. I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, this is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. would ask other comments, questions first by the council. Uh, likewise, is there anyone in the public that wants to speak on this item? I know we've got the develop representative. Council Moffitt, did you have a comment? I, I had a question <coughs> on this, um, and I, for staff first, which just is that uh, the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Commission had a series of recommendations. Can you just tell me the status of those recommendations? Uh, let me grab my uh, staff report, and if you if you wouldn't mind, I'll have the applicant address what they believe has been addressed, and then I'll try to confirm that. Be great, thanks. Mayor Bell, members of council, Ron Horvath, Horvath Associates, thank you for the time this evening. Um, 
before I jump into your answer, Don, Sutton Station was a project that we got approved in the uh, mid-90s. The zoning ordinance back then allowed O&I development, o office and institutional, to have up to 49% of retail uses. And Sutton Station, we kind of convinced our client to go into the first true mixed-use project. It has retail, it has office, and it has residential. And uh, with the adoption of the UDO in 2006, the clarification of 49% retail or minority retail became a little blurrier. And as time's gone on, uh, we really needed to keep it viable by having at least half of it or thereabouts retail, half office, and not having to ask for <coughs> special exemptions every time a new tenant came in and out. Hence, we looked at the mixed-use zoning, and that's why we bring it to you tonight. The bike pad did have some requests. In fact, some of the additional uh, bike racks they would ask about have already been put in because we found a need for them with a couple of the restaurants that have uh, recently gone in. I believe we're handling all their comments, including the uh, proper signage of the American Tobacco Trail. I hope that answers your question, Don and Council. If you have any questions, I'll be here. Thank you. I recognize Councilman Moffitt. Is that? Uh, I'm just waiting yeah. for Mr. Yeah. Young. Um, Commissioner uh, Councilmember Moffitt, if you look at uh, the last round of comments from 1223, Attachment 7. Um, we believe, I was just consulting with transportation, I mean, we believe that they've been substantially addressed, that there are slight variations in what committed on the one and eight addresses, and th th those have been made to the satisfaction of TTA, or excuse me, Go Triangle and transportation staff, and uh, condition seven was, was refined to reflect the comments. Okay. Are there other questions by council? Uh, anyone in the public that wants to speak that hasn't spoken? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else has to speak. I'll declare the public and close the record for the council. Move the item. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. We move to item 26. I'm sorry. To stay. Stay. Yeah. Second. That's right. It's been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Move to item 26, conference plan amendment, Hamilton Center. A fourteen zero 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 six. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Again, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, this case, Hamilton Center two A fourteen zero 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 six. The applicant is Horvath Associates. Location is seventy ten Highway seven fifty one, which is at uh, that road's uh, intersection with NC Highway fifty four, the southwest quadrant. Uh, and the request is to change five point zero two acre parcel from its current uh, future <coughs> land use map designation of office to commercial. And uh, staff recommends approval of this request based on compliance with the four criteria for comprehensive plan amendment uh, requests in the Unified Development Ordinance. And at its uh, March 10th, excuse me, February 10th meeting, the Planning Commission recommended approval by a vote of 12 to 0. I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, the public hearing is open. Uh, there are questions by members of the council. We have uh, Mr. Harvard. And is anyone else that wants to speak on this item? Just, I'll be here to answer any questions and give a little bit of a brief on the actual zoning case. Thank you. Are uh, there any other questions? If not, uh, declare the public hearing to be closed. Max, put matters back before the council. Second. It's been probably moving a second. All in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That and we we'll move to item. 27, <laughs> zoning map change, Hamilton Center to Z14000021. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, this case is the companion to the uh, plan amendment case you just heard. Same property, 7010 NC 751 Highway, and the request here is to change the zoning map uh, designation from Office Institutional or OI to Commercial General with a development plan to allow up to 40,000 square feet of retail and restaurant uses. Um, this case is similar in, in some regards to the Sutton Station case you heard earlier this evening and that it's a developed site which uh, 
this action would allow retail development at a site that's currently restricted primarily to office and institutional uses. Uh, the development plan uh, associated with this request does have several commitments in excess of ordinance standards, including commitment to construct a concrete pad or bus shelter and bus shelter if required by data and TTA at the time of site plan. Uh, Staff determines this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other adopted policies <coughs> and ordinances, and Planning Commission recommended approval at its uh, February 10th meeting by a vote of 12 to 0. we will be happy to take any questions. Other questions, comments, uh, members of the council? Uh, again, recognize Mr. Harvath, and, and is anyone else that wants to speak on this item? Not Ron. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the council, I'll be very brief. Uh, this is the same developer, same owner same problem um, if you've noticed out there is a number of smaller buildings we actually tried to bring this in under neighborhood commercial to keep the intensity down unfortunately when you add all the buildings up it's over the maximum allowed square footage in neighborhood commercial so we had to slide into the general commercial but we do have a limit again about the 50 percent mark on retail and the remainder has to be office the only thing we're missing in this one is the residential I ask for your support tonight. Thank you. Other other comments? If not, uh, let the record reflect. No one else has to comment from the public. Uh, I'll declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. Move the item. Second. Been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion and kept by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion passes. Move to adopt the consistency aye. statement. Second. Been properly moved and second. All in favor of the motion and kept by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, and the motion passes unanimously. And Ron, let me say, I, I have obviously, I shouldn't say obviously, I, I live <coughs> not too far from Sutton Station, but it's really been a great development it from is. what I've seen. It's Thank well you. kept and looks like you get the participation, so I appreciate that. I'll pass that on to Mr. McGee. Thank okay. you. Mr. Mayor, can I make a Recognize comment? Councilwoman Katani. Yeah, I, before I forgot, I just wanted to appreciate uh, several applicants on the agenda tonight that deferred from two weeks ago, and we do appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see the game. <laughs> okay. Just two weeks You're such ago. a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter was very happy. Okay. Item 28K8, Comprehensive Plan Amendment, Highway 54, Residential 814-000005. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Pat Young again with the Planning Department. Uh, this case, uh, Highway 54, Residential 814-000005, is an application by Hopper Communities uh, for a future land use map uh, amendment, a comprehensive plan amendment to the future land use map for uh, four parcels of land, approximately 21.72 acres, at the north side of NC Highway 54. The addresses are 1413, 1429, 1431, and 1501 uh, at, at NC 54's intersection with the Revere Road. Um, the request is to change the future land use map designation from its current designation of office to medium high density residential. Uh, staff recommends approval based on compliance with the four uh, criteria for plan amendments found in the Durham UDO. And uh, Planning Commission recommended approval at its February 10th, 2015 meeting by a vote of 12 to 0. I'll be happy to take any questions. Let me ask you, are there questions by members of the, of the council on this item? I, I have a couple of questions, and I guess it, it pretty much relates with just Highway 54 in that section of town. I mean, uh, we're seeing a proliferation of uh, apartments on that area. And I, I'd like somebody to speak to the sense behind the planning department's thought that this is the right direction for this to go in, especially in view of the fact that uh, at some point in time, I assume we're still going to be widening Highway 54. And, uh, Mr. Mayor, the, um, I'll, I'll speak to that, and then I'm, I might ask Mr. Judge to, to add to my comments. Uh, obviously, as you, I think, alluded to, one of the key concerns out in this area is the volume of traffic and the level of service of traffic. And so we looked at that uh, issue very closely, and there's a companion zoning map case that makes several accommodations to reflect, uh, in, including additional right-of-way dedication um, to uh, try to ensure that, that that condition can be mitigated through improvement of 54 in the future. Another issue we looked at in the staff report is that the office designation, uh, particularly in this part of town, appears to be there appears to be uh, a higher, lesser demand for office than we anticipated when we did the comprehensive plan in the mid 2000s. And there's a much higher demand for multifamily residential. And as as you alluded to, that there certainly is um, 
as long as I think the, the conclusion was as long as the transportation impacts can be mitigated or addressed, uh, the high demand for uh, multifamily residential is supportable in this area because of the good transportation access and proximity to shopping and employment. Judge, going to speak, Sharon, and more. <laughs> yeah, I would uh, basically just repeat most of what uh, Pat just indicated in the companion zoning case. It's actually a, a slight decrease in potential traffic generation from uh, the office to the multifamily. So um, looking at the impact, while certainly NC-54 is has its capacity issues, there is a future TIP project, although currently it's not in the draft step to, to widen this section. So it may be a number of years before before that project's complete. And I guess that's what uh, I'm, I'm questioning because uh, we have one, two, well, we've got a development that's already approved that hasn't done anything other than clear the land and put a sign up. And another proposal for another uh, change for off office right on the corner of 54 and Barbie Road. And uh, how, how, how are you taking that in consideration if suddenly all these developments come to fruition and we still haven't widened Highway 54 in terms of the traffic? Um, the applicant did prepare a traffic impact analysis with this rezoning request that looked at the, the peak hour of the adjacent intersections and they were able to document that with both this development and those existing approved developments that they would function or operate at an adequate level of service during the peak hour um, and beyond that in making that comprehensive plan determination. We did also look at the existing approved developments uh, across the street as well as adjacent to the site. It did not take into account any other cases that may be submitted or come before this board in the future, but just those that have already been approved. Well, I mean, are we reaching a point where, because you haven't got too much land to develop along 54 of what's being proposed, but uh, do we reach a point where we say we aren't going to do any more? given what's already on the books and we still haven't gotten 50 who are widened? Yeah, so certainly, Mr. Mayor, the, the comprehensive plan um, has some pretty explicit language, as I think you're well aware about um, the capacity issues on NC-54. <coughs> and, and I think it would be fair to say, uh, and Mr. Judge can certainly speak further to this, that um, <clears throat> the most recent developments, including this one, the tra you talked about the transportation impact analysis, really bring that level of traffic very close to that threshold where you're going to see us start recommending denial of these cases because it will be impossible to mitigate impacts. We're not at that point yet, but we are very close. So I think to your point, um, um, there, unless there's a change in policy, we would probably, in, uh, unless there's some uh, new way that we haven't been able to ascertain to mitigate impacts, um, that probably will reach that threshold in the near future. Now, that's when the traffic is one issue. What, what about the fact that you've got a lot of wooded area that suddenly is going to be transformed with these proposed developments? And I, I know we're talking about the land use plan right now, but the next plan is getting more specific to what the developer wants to do. Are we taking any of that in consideration? Well, Mr. Mayor, we are to the extent that the ordinance, again, as I think you're well aware, the ordinance has pretty stringent um, requirements for tree preservation, buffers, stormwater treatment, and other uh, requirements that mitigate the environmental impact. Of course, there, there are no regulations that would address directly the aesthetic impact of removal of the trees, but we do have um, pretty significant site development regulations that would ensure uh, that there's both buffers, tree preservation, tree replacement, street trees, uh, and other features that are intended to offset that impact. Let me ask uh, another question that is related and it isn't related specifically, but the developments that we have approved, and I'm asking this, are you all getting any interest and in, are you seeing anything happening with the developers that have got the land, have got it rezoned for actually any action? And I think you know the, the section of, that I'm speaking about in 54. Sure. So, Mr. Mayor, so there, there have, what we're observing is that um, the folks that have rec recently received zoning approvals ha are coming in for their site plan, which is kind of the second to last step prior to building permit. Mm -hmm. To my, the best of my knowledge, there hasn't been building permits pulled, but you've seen grading out yeah. there. 
they have approval to do grade, tree removal and grading, and uh, that they are getting in, they're in the process of getting their site plans approved. So again, typically what that means, if the market conditions are sustained, that you're you know six months out between before construction, that can vary based on the, the prerogatives of the developer. But um, the, we we have every good reason to believe those will be proceeding in the near future. What, what what's the time frame that developers have once they've been given the zoning to get work done? So um, the zoning stays with the land in perpetuity. They have um, once they get a site plan, they have four years to four years. to to begin construction, and then the building permit has to stay active every six months. It's evaluated to ensure it's still active. Okay. Are there other questions on this item? Let me ask: Is anyone in the public that wants to speak on this item? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, Jared Edens with Edens Land Corp. I'm um, just going to speak briefly to the land use amendment and the zoning case. I'm here representing my client, uh, Hopper Communities. Uh, I'm just going to highlight a few points. Um, obviously, we feel the density is appropriate for this area given the proximity to Highway 40, uh, the South Point retail nearby. 54 is also a bus route along the property. Uh, we did perform a traffic study as part of the project. Um, I realize that there's a, a pending TIP project that may ultimately widen 54. Uh, actually, between this project and the Madry parcel that we rezoned a few months ago, when those are developed, you will, in essence, get a lot of that widening on 54 because you'll have a, a double uh, center turn lane that will be from this property that connects all the way to Barbie Road when these two projects uh, go into effect. And the TIA did include all the background traffic of existing approved projects. Uh, we are providing bike lane, a uh, four-foot bike lane along 54. Uh, we're committing, we're only going to have one permanent driveway to Highway 54. Uh, we'll have interconnectivity with that Madry parcel in the rear when that connection becomes available. Um, we had a neighborhood meeting last year. We have no opposition that I'm aware of. And um, I guess I do want to proffer this. I guess this is part of the zoning case technically, but um, uh, due to the 43 additional students, uh, as a result of the zoning, uh, my client is willing to make a donation of $21,500 to Durham Public Schools, who, which would be paid prior to the first final plat uh, for this development. That's $500 per student. And I'd be glad to answer any other questions you have. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Again, uh, is there anyone else who wants to speak on this, this being a public hearing? Comments. Recognize Councilman Shul. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and appreciate your raising those concerns. I had made a note that we got long-term traffic problems in this area regardless of our actions on this. I mean, we really, really do. Um, appreciate the proffer of the, of the, uh, the funds for Durham Public Schools. Um, I just want to notice, again, we've got, I believe, 320, 320 units. Um, you know, with 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 all market rate, no affordable, nothing affordable, uh, and I just really, you know, we we need our our toolkit and our our uh, we need our options to uh, help encourage this. And so I know you all are working on it, and just want to notice again that we're we're back in our in our usual situation. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no further questions. I'll declare the public hearing to be closed and the matter is back before the council. Move the item. Second. And properly move and second. All in favor of the motion and keep it saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. Let's, Let's move see. to the next item, item 20. Nine. Zoning map Voting change, no. Highway 54, residential. Did you vote no? I voted no. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Okay. Z14 to read from Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young again with the Planning Department. Uh, this case, C14-00018, is companion case to the um, plan in the case you just heard, Highway 54 <coughs> Residential, 21.72 acres, located at 1413 to 1501, NC Highway 54 on the north side of 54 at Revere Road. 
Um, the request is to change the zoning map designation from residential suburban 20, office institutional, and office institutional with a development plan to residential suburban multifamily with a development plan which would allow a maximum of 320 multifamily residential units. Uh, this development plan is associated with uh, a number of commitments that exceed ordinance standards, which include um, commitment to housing type, apartments or townhouses, dedication of right-of-way along NC-54 to accommodate future roadway improvements, as mentioned previously, um, addition, uh, installation of a bike lane, and other roadway improvements at the site entrances uh, along 54 for the project, along with additional com other commitments outlined in your staff report. Uh, and we would ask that the uh, previous proffer made at the previous item be incorporated uh, to, this to this item. Uh, staff determines that this uh, request is consistent with the comprehensive plan based on your previous action and other adopted policies and ordinances. Uh, and Planning Commission recommended approval at its February 10th meeting by a vote of 12 to 0. I'll be happy to take any questions. You've heard the staff report other questions by members of the council. Is there anyone in the public that wants to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one in the public wanted to speak on this item. Uh, I'm going to close the public hearing. The matter is back before the council. Move the item. Second. It's been proper to move and second. All in favor of the motion, then kept by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. And I'll move the consistency statement. Second. It's been proper to move and second. All in favor of the motion, then kept by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. <laughs> move to the adjournment. adjournment. Is that true <laughs> at eight? Recognize Councilman Moffitt. I, I was just sitting here a few minutes ago reflecting on how much work we did tonight. I mean, real serious work and how efficient that we've been. And I just want to appreciate all of you for um, the way that, I mean, I, I just been, it's a, been a delight to serve with all of you, and I just needed to say that publicly. So thank, thank you. you. you we we'll move adjournment. Are you including <laughs> Eugene? Are you including <laughs> Eugene? <laughs> <laughs> Just let the record show I'm including <laughs> Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other items to come before the council? <laughs> 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 if not, <laughs> if not no, of course. <laughs> we adjourn at 820 p.m. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you all. Without a ball. <laughs>